Pop Culture is a business that I started uh, officially. The store opened July 3rd of last year. It sort of goes back several years before that when I was living in Nashville and there's a, there's a Paletta shop in Nashville called Las Paletas that I used to go to all the time with my daughter. And it's gourmet frozen pops. And so I started playing around at home, making them in my apartment. My freezer would fill up. I'd take them out to the pool, hand them out to everybody. And it just started growing and I started getting more and more interested in it from that point. I started visiting shops everywhere from St. Augustine, Florida to upstate New York. And when I moved back to Knoxville, then that's when I decided I could actually start doing it as a business, have a store, start doing the farmer's markets and make a go of it. The original idea was to have a couple carts spread throughout the city, use that to fund money to eventually have a store. Knoxville's got a few little tricky laws and stuff where the carts, the food carts fit into the whole food truck issue that they're trying to figure out. So when I realized that I couldn't just take the cart up to Market Square, sell pops, and, and have a go of it. Then I had to sort of adjust things and found the store, the original store over in the Medical Arts Building, um, opened up this store at that point, and sort of moved my timetable up probably a year of, of when I really wanted to open up a store. But that's all right. It's all a learning experience, and we adjust and move forward. I do six farmers markets a week and so as much as I can because I'm a big believer in eating locally and using local produce where your food comes from so as much as possible I get as many of my ingredients locally as possible so part of the thing that I do also up on the board and I've got some more names to add is the local farms that I do use so some things obviously you can't, whether it's pineapple or mangoes or whatever, but berries and melons and cucumbers and just everything else. The mint that I use for a cucumber mint, I grow myself or, well, actually I have my mom <laughs> grow it for me, but, but it's local as well. So I do try to use as many of the local vendors by, by whatever you want to call them, friends at the farmer's markets and buy as much as I can from them. So it's a very simple process of making this because it is just fruit, a little bit of cane sugar, water, and then if there are any other ingredients like the mint or jalapenos or you know anything else that you see, but it's basically just combining the fruit. I blend it all up, freeze it, bag it up, and sell it. It's most of these have four to five ingredients, and that's it, and that's including sugar and water as two of the ingredients. So. There's not a lot to it, but surprisingly, it turns out really well. Yesterday in the store we were playing around, came up with the idea of doing a banana cream pie. And so, other than the vanilla wafers that are in it, <laughs> then it really is bananas, vanilla, cream, milk, sugar, and water, and that's it. So, very healthy desserts. As you can see, everything on that side, the water-based ones are 100 calories or less, the dairy-based, 120 calories or less, some of them even a lot less than that, still under 100 calories for the dairy-based ones because there isn't a lot of high fructose corn syrup. There's not a lot of sugar. There is sugar in every one of them, but that helps it freeze. If you don't put the sugar in there, then they turn into an ice cube and it doesn't have that right texture, mouthfeel to it. It started off with the, with the flavors that I make that you kind of have some basic ideas and then people are always giving you suggestions. The number one bestseller is strawberry lemonade. And when I started out, because I'm not very creative, then I did a contest on Facebook that asking for flavor suggestions. And actually there's a woman by the name of Sarah who came up with strawberry lemonade. It's my fault that I haven't put her name up on the board, but I cause I told her that I would name it after her since she won the contest. And I had that up at the old location, but this one I haven't done it yet. I should though. So as a joke, I came up with a flavor of doing macaroni and cheese. And the cheese, I used mascarpone cheese, like an Italian cream cheese. And it was just as a joke to put on the board at the farmer's market so that people would see it and stop. But out of that came up with the idea that I realized if you take out the pasta, because that's pretty plain tasting, and I could put in a fruit like blueberries, now you've got a blueberry cheesecake and that one's really good. So things sort of 
evolve and you come up cantaloupe jalapeno I last year I did just plain cantaloupe and it didn't sell that well and a farmer a couple two or three stalls down for me sells peppers and so I knew that a traditional flavor is like mango chili or something like that and so I just had the idea of trying it with jalapenos and surprisingly it worked and so you take off and go with that so it really is just a process of trying new things some things don't work out most things kind of do and they still sell well but um, the ones that don't work out usually have to do with the color because I don't add any artificial colors in there if it comes out crazy looking then people aren't gonna buy it no matter how good it tastes so you kind of have to skip those peach Bellini was something a suggestion that I had from somebody out at Imes actually that uh, does catering and just came up oh you should try a peach Bellini I didn't even know what it was at the time then I realized it was champagne so yeah okay I'll try it people ask me to try different things for them all the time and I'll give it a shot whether it turns out or not or whether I know what it's supposed to taste like because <laughs> if I've never had it before then I don't, I don't really know what it's supposed to taste like but I'll give it a shot and we'll run with it I do believe that it's important that as I grow that I still maintain quality. No matter how big it is, still just your local shop sort of attitude and mentality. I do think it's important to eat locally and